Lunasa, Lou's Assembly, grew up from Telltown's Tail Team Games, games Ireland's Iron Age once knew, held to honour and acclaim not the god long-handed Lou, although Lou's eclipsing fame shows in its name, but dead Tail Two, a funeral feast that Lou proclaimed, do what you will, but what we do, his foster mother could reclaim. Tail Tew took off, axe in her hand, and felled the trees that ranged across Ireland's plain. The squirrel's loss led to the gain of fertile land that gave folk grain. The mouth of man is fed its bread at such a cost. Use well the earth on which we stand. O Amos Lunasa, as quarter day, among the Scots was called instead Mass of the Loaf, when Christians prayed most piously in praise of bread. Anglo-Saxonly, Chlaf Mass, some thus now know Lunasa as. A Harvest of Festivals Just as through ewes in bulk brings fresh milk, the first fruits of new harvests now come home. A summer sun which shone on Celts and Celts shines now on us, however the day's known. Names change, but the same celebration shown for Lamas as Lunasa, when the fields first give to us their yearly golden yields. Where there's new food, there's newfound cause to feast. Lunasa springs up from the seeds we've sown. Not just new grain is gained, also increased our friendships and festivities, homegrown. We need bread, but can't live by it alone. Summer sun shines on both grain and grins, as in the fields our friends are gathered in. At this time the people take their pleasure, and come together to sport at such games of skill and speed and strength as help us measure ourselves against the many gifts Lou claimed. A simple tug of war might seem too tame compared to tales of long past pagan rites. But folk in fields know fun on summer night. Lang syne, as I understand it, when food was all home farmed botanics, and all grains grown were grown organic, folk would bring Lewin by baking those grains in a bannock they called the Struin. This custom came, when centuries passed, to shift along to Michaelmas, when a farmstead's eldest lass, for harvest's sake, took cereals of every class and at night baked. This oat and rye and barley cake is three times battered as it's baked. There are several forms it takes, historically. To taste one modern form, just make this recipe. Two cups of flour in a bowl, baking flour, ideally whole, half a cup of good oats rolled and cornmeal, and half a cup of sugar, gold, and a third cup bran. Add two tablespoons of yeast to help the finished loaf increase, four teaspoons salt, sea salt is best, others suffice, a fourth cup honey, it's a feast, and a half cup cooked rice. 
following the U.S. daughter, add to this one cup warm water. Then, as our U.S. mother taught her, mix smooth as silk and add a cup, well, just three quarters, of buttermilk. While mixing, add in drop by drop more flour, a further five more cups, to help your mixture stiffen up when mixed just so. Like the baker who's hard up, you'll knead the dough. Place the dough into a bowl and cover it up with a towel. Wait an hour and the dough will double in size. This will make three loaves when rolled, sources advise. Roll each third into a loaf with just one seam. Pinch that seam off, take a tin and grease its trough and seam side down. Place your loaf in and then we'll quaff its battered crown. In place of batter, some instead like the recipe I read, use a wash to glaze its head. Take up a brush. In four cups water, beat one egg. Like Bob Ross says, no rush. Bake at 350 Fahrenheit. 50 minutes should be right, and your loaf will be domed and light with a hard gold crust. Just the thing to bring delight at Michaelmas. <laughs>